Hi, welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about projections, which is an incredibly important, incredibly applicable subject in linear algebra. And it will harken back to the stuff that we talked about last time on orthogonal complements. In fact, this will sort of be the picture of projection, which is one of the reasons why we studied orthogonal complements in the last lecture. Okay, so what is the idea behind projection? The idea is oftentimes, uh, you have some subspace V and you're looking for a point in V. <laughs> so often you have some subspace V in a vector space and you are looking for a point and you want a point in V. Okay, I'm being really vague here because there's applications all over the place. And what you have is you have a point B maybe that comes from some data that is not actually in V. You have a point B that's not in V. And the idea is, what's the closest point? To B that's actually in V. The answer will be the projection of B onto V. Okay, and um, one of the main examples that we'll see, which is actually next lecture, is linear regression. Okay, so let me just give you like, I'm not going to fully explain everything because we need to develop these tools, but just to give you some idea of how it's related to this idea, what do you do in a linear regression, or in fact any regression actually, uh, you have a bunch of points, right? Say in a linear regression, and what you're looking for is you're looking for a line that goes through all the points. That's what you would love ideally, right? Because then the line would model the relationship between whatever these two variables are. So what you want is you want a line going through the points. Uh, so you can think of maybe uh, the space of lines. Those are determined by two variables, right? Lines are determined by a slope and a, and a y-intercept. So it's a two-dimensional space sitting inside of some vector space. I haven't really told you which. But this set of data points is almost never going to lie on a line. Right? So you can think of V is somehow the space of all possible lines, the subspace of all possible lines. Again, I'm being kind of vague here. And this data point, so this data, is certainly not in V. Again, being very vague here. Because these points don't lie on a line. So what you're looking for, in some sense, is you're looking for what's the closest that I can get, um, what data set is sort of closest to this data set, but actually does all lie on a line. And that answer will be related to the best fit line, the linear regression. Okay, we'll also look at an example um, at the end of class where maybe you're trying to express a picture as a linear combination of other pictures. But in general, most pictures are not linear combinations of these pictures, but you can get maybe an approximate picture that is a linear combination of the pictures. Okay, so again, this slide, the bottom half of the slide, I'll talk more about when we actually study linear regression next lecture. But the idea is just how do you find the closest point to in, in a subspace. Okay, and the point is, is that we sort of saw the answer last time, right? So now V is our subspace and B is our vector B, the blue, the blue vector. And in order to get as close to V as possible, what do you want? What you want is you want to get uh, a vector that's inside of V. So that's this vector BB. That's a perpendicular line away from B, right? In other words, if you picked any other point in the plane, if I picked any other point in the plane and I drew the line to B, it would be longer because it wouldn't be perpendicular. So this thing that we figured out about orthogonal complements should somehow give us the projection. In particular, this theorem, right? If you have any subspace V of Rn, then you take any vector that you want in Rn, and you can write it as something in V and something that's perpendicular to V. And this something in V should be our projection. 
Okay, so let me let me write all that out. So we saw last time. If V is any subspace of Rn, and B is any vector in Rn, then you can uniquely express B as BV plus BV perp, where BV is in V and BV perp is in V perp. And so this guy is the thing that we're looking for. Okay, so this thing will be called eventually the projection of B onto V. That's what that thing will be called. Uh, and this thing that's left over will oftentimes, in a lot of cases, we'll call this E for sort of like the error term, right? So B is like a vector in V plus some, some small error. Okay, and again, the picture is exactly, I mean, this is exactly the picture that you should think of. V is a plane like this. B is a vector like this. And what you're looking for is you're looking for this vector. This is BV, and then this is the error term. And th there'll be a right angle here. Now, how could you do this? Well, technically, what we did last time gives us enough tools to do this. What can you do? You could just find a find a basis for V. So to do this, you could just take uh, a K, a basis for V. And then also you can take a one prime up through a n minus K prime a basis for v perp. And we know that if you have a basis for v and a basis for its orthogonal complement, then altogether that would give you a basis for rn. Right? So then if you take all of these vectors, it's a basis for rn. Then you could uh, solve for what coordinates in this basis give you b, right? You could just find the linear combination by putting these as the as the columns of a matrix, right? Uh, prime and b, and then you could solve for the coefficients. That would give you the coefficient vector, and then you take the first k coefficients, and that would give you the expression for bv. So technically, you could do this even now, just using math, uh, math 308 stuff, right? Because we even learned how that you can express any V and any V perp as the row space and the column space of some matrix. And you, sorry, the row space and the null space of some matrix. And so you could solve for V perp and find a basis and all that. Okay, but um, it will be useful if we could do this faster than this process, right? This is an important enough concept that if we could figure out some things that are true in general, figure out some sort of formula, then it would be very useful for us. Okay, and we might want to do this a whole bunch of times, right? I might give you a bunch of vectors, b1, b2, b3, and you want to know all the projections onto v. And so if we had some sort of way to do this quickly and easily, it would, that would be nice. And there sort of should be a way to do this quickly and easily. Right? We just need to figure out what it is. Okay, so here is... The, the motivation for how we do it. Okay, so V is any subspace. We know that every subspace has a basis. And so let's find a basis for V, the subspace we're interested in. Okay, then certainly we know that if we let A be the matrix whose columns are these basis vectors, this is a an n by k matrix, right? n rows k columns. Uh, we know that the column space of A is the same thing as V. Right, we also know that the, the column space of A is the same thing as all the vectors Ax, where x is some vector in Rn.
Okay, well, what are we looking for? We are looking for a way to write b as bv perp, sorry, bv plus bv, bv perp, and this thing should be in the column space of a in this context. So therefore, BV should be inside this column space. BV should equal A times X hat for some X hat, for some fixed X hat in, in Rn. Okay, and then of course, after that, uh, this thing, sorry, which I said we would, we would often call E in practice, uh, e will just be uh, b minus bv. And then this thing should be perpendicular to, to v. Right. Now, from the fact that uh, e is perpendicular to v, we know that E should be orthogonal to every column of A, right? So what are we, again, let's not, let's not lose sight of the goal here. We're looking for BV. This is the thing that we're looking for. What we have is we have B, right? So since we want E, which is B minus BV, to be perpendicular to V, this means that E is perpendicular to each of the columns of A, right, for every I. In other words, uh, A1 transpose times B minus BV has to equal zero, but also so does A2 transpose times B minus BV up through AK. That's our basis. Okay, but I could combine all of these equations into a single equation if I took the transposes of the columns, so those are now row vectors, put them into a matrix, and I said that this thing has to be, when you multiply by b minus bv, you should get the zero vector. Right? Um, now let's make a substitution. I said that BV should be AX hat for some X hat. So um, by the way, this matrix is just a transpose, right? So the transpose of the matrix is, is coming into play here because um, I want it to be orthogonal to every, every vector, every column of A. Okay, so what is this? This says that A transpose times B minus AX hat has to be equal to the zero vector. But now I can rearrange this to say that A transpose B is equal to A transpose A X hat. Okay, and what we've done here is we've, we've actually done something very useful. It seems like all I've done is I've just moved around some, some equations and then I got some other equation. But the point is, is that when you start what you have is you have V and you have B, right? When you start, you, you have a V and you have a B, and you're looking for BV, which is the same thing as looking for X hat, right? So to start, you have V and you have B, and you want BV, which is the same thing as looking for X hat, such that uh, BV equals A times X hat, which means that when you start, uh, you can get A, you can get A transpose, and you can get B. So all of these things you have, and you're searching for X hat, then it becomes just one, one system that you need to solve. Okay, so these things are very important. This, this equation down here, this, these are called the normal equations, right? Uh, it's a matrix. Uh, equation, so you could also write it as a bunch of different equations, or you could write it in this compact matrix notation. Okay, so definition uh, the equations 
a transpose a x equals a transpose b are called the normal equations. And notice here that I used x rather than x hat because here x is a variable that I that I will solve for. I'm going to solve for the x hat that that makes this equation true. Okay, but then you might ask, well, can you always solve this equation? But sort of the point is, is that solving this equation, the way that we've rigged it up, solving this equation is exactly the same thing as finding a, a vector BV and a vector E that satisfy this picture. And you should always be able to do this. You should always be able to find a closest point. Just, just think of it in 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 real life in three space, right? If I if I hold up some uh, sheet of paper and I give you some point, there's got to be a fastest way to get from the point to the sheet of paper. That will be via this perpendicular line, this normal line. Uh, and it turns out that this system is always consistent. You might also ask, though, even if it's consistent, how do I know that there's not infinitely many solutions? And again, our intuition should say something like, oh, well, there's only one solution, because if I take a point and a piece of paper, there's only one point on the paper that's closest to, to, that, to that plane, to that piece of paper. Okay, but then notice that what you're really asking about is you're asking a math 308 question. You're asking whether this system, this matrix times x equals this vector, how many solutions does it have? And that's related to the invertibility of the matrix A transpose A. So is this invertible? It's square, right? And the answer is that as long as you chose the columns of A to be linearly independent, then A transpose A will always be invertible. This is a very important fact. And so if a1 through AK is linearly independent. Then A transpose A is invertible. And that will tell us that we'll always be able to solve A transpose AX equals A transpose B or X hat. In other words, we will always be able to find the thing that we need to project B onto V, which is the column space of A. Okay, so let's actually prove this. This is super important. Notice that when I set this up originally, I said that you could fi you found a basis here. Um, of course, everything here, everything I said on this slide works if you just take a set A1 through AK such that the span is actually equal to V. But in practice, you will take a, you will take a basis, which means that they will be linearly independent. And so you'll always be able to find that A transpose A is invertible. Okay, so here's the proof. Okay, so let A be this matrix whose columns are A1 through AK. That's a matrix in R n by K. Okay, and recall from the, the unifying theorem, you thought you could get away from the unifying theorem but you never can, uh, that A transpose A will be invertible if and only if its null space is equal to just the zero vector. The only thing in the null space is the zero vector. Okay, so let's suppose that Y is in the null space of this matrix. Okay, what does that mean? That means that if you take A transpose A times Y, you get zero. And now I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna multiply on the left, on both sides of this, by the vector Y transpose, right? Y transpose, which has the correct size, right? Because, um, whoops, A transpose A, I guess, I guess we should talk about the sizes of these things, right? So maybe I'll just do it up here. A is an n by k matrix. 
A transpose is a K by N matrix. So A transpose A is K by K. It's square. And so why in this, um, in this proof, this, this vector Y here is gonna be in RK, right? And so Y transpose will also be in RK, just a, a row vector, but you then you, you can, uh, so then Y transpose times A transpose A times Y is equal to Y transpose times the zero vector, which is just equal to um, the number zero. This is not the zero vector. Right? So it's it's worth it's worth talking about what the sizes of these things are. This thing is um, one by K, one row in K columns, because this one is in K by K. Sorry, this one is in K by N. This one is N by K. This one is K by one. Let me write it so that you can actually see it. Sorry, I've, I've had some comments, not unfair comments, just comments about how my handwriting is a little bit illegible on a tablet. Uh, I admit that I'm, I'm better on paper at the board. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying my best here, but I sometimes forget. Uh, this is one by K. This is K by one. And so the product is one by one. It's actually a scalar. Okay. Well, a thing that you've learned about transposes is that Y transpose A transpose is the same thing as A Y transpose. So this is a y transpose times a y equals zero. What does that mean though? That means that a y dot product with a y, these are vectors, remember a y is a vector, is equal to zero. Which means that the, the, the norm squared of a y is equal to zero. Which means that the norm of ay is equal to zero. And the only vector with norm ay is the zero vector. Okay, note, I'm being very careful here about what zeros are scalars and which zeros are the zero vector. Okay, but this means that y is a vector that's actually in the null space of a. Every vector in the null space of a transpose a is actually a vector in the null space of a. So in fact, a y is equal to zero, meaning that uh, the null space y is in the null space of a. But a, a theorem from undergrad linear algebra says that if the columns of a were linearly independent, then the only vector in the null space is zero. Since the columns of a were linearly independent, This means that the null space of A is just the zero vector. That's because the only linear combination of a set of linear independent, linearly independent vectors that's zero is a trivial one. That's another way to state this fact, which means that Y is zero, which is exactly what we wanted, right? We chose any vector in the null space of A transpose A, and it was the zero vector. That means that A transpose A is invertible. because uh, A transpose A is square. Okay, so I would say that this is a very non-obvious fact, actually, um, that if you take a matrix with linearly independent columns, you compute A transpose A. It's just some square matrix. It's, I think it's pretty non-obvious that it's invertible, but in fact, it is. Okay, and this thing, I mean, the fact that this A transpose A is invertible means that we will always be able to solve the normal equations for a unique x hat, and then BB will be A times x hat. Okay, so this proposition actually allows us to compute projections. Right, because um, we, we want to solve 
a transpose a x equals a transpose b. We want to solve these normal equations. But now a transpose a is invertible. So you can solve this to find x hat, that's the solution, is going to be a transpose a inverse times a transpose times b. Because this matrix is invertible, as long as we chose a basis of v so that they would be linearly independent. Right, this is assuming that a1 through ak was a basis of v. So once we've done that, then a times x hat, this is our bv. And uh, our vector e, our error, will be b minus bv. Just what you get that's left over, essentially. Okay, so how do you actually find the projection of B onto V? It's just <laughs> A times X hat. So it's A times A transpose A inverse times A transpose times B. This is actually a formula that gives you BV. BV is just this thing, and all parts of this are computable, right? If I give you a subspace V, you find a basis that gives you the matrix A. You can then take A, A transpose. You can take A transpose times A, find its inverse. And then multiplying by this matrix projects you onto V. That is uh, multiplication by A, A transpose A inverse. A transpose sends B to its projection. In other words, we found a matrix that will actually do the, do the projection for us. So th that thing, this thing here, this crazy looking thing, that's going to be our projection matrix is what we'll call it. So let's call that a proposition. So let V be a subspace of Rn with basis A1 through AK. Sorry, I really am trying uh, to write a little bit clearer. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the it's the lack of um, paper like friction on the tablet that screws me up. Uh, then the projection onto V is given by the projection matrix P, maybe I should say given by multiplication by the projection matrix. P equals A times A transpose A inverse times A transpose. Okay, so uh, I think depending on what courses you've taken, you may have actually already seen a matrix like this. It's not it's not covered in 308 because um, regression and uh, orthogonality are not covered in, in 308, but maybe you've seen this in some other class um, and you'll see it, we'll see it more than once in this class as well. Uh, but now, first of all, we know where it comes from. It sort of naturally comes from trying to find a vector that's orthogonal <laughs> to the column space of A, right? And another thing that we learned is that you have to be very careful. You need to make sure that the A's are linearly, in, the columns of A are linearly independent. So if I just gave you a spanning set for V and you try to do this blindly, A transpose A in general wouldn't be invertible unless the AIs were linearly independent. Okay, so that's the warning. The columns of A must be linearly independent for this to work. Okay. Now, another thing that's true about this matrix is that if you square it, if you multiply it by itself, you get back P. 
And remember, we were talking about at the end of le last lecture that this is very related to this homework problem that you had. That in fact, whatever matrix we get that projects onto a subspace, we should expect that doing it twice is the same thing as doing it once. Because once you're actually on V, the closest point in V to you is yourself. So we should expect, uh, I want to go to this lecture. So we should expect that P squared should equal P. Okay, so let's, let's actually just do it. So here's P, here's P again. This is P squared, right? And the point is, is that what do we have in here? We have an A transpose A times, uh, if I had written it correctly, which I didn't, times its inverse. And so what you get in the end is you just get A times A transpose A inverse times A transpose. So that's just P. So this matrix does satisfy what we expect it to, namely applying it twice is the same thing as applying it once. And we, we already had a homework problem about matrices like this so that we understand quite a bit about them. And as I said, uh, we'll have more problems related to these throughout the quarter, so we'll gain a deeper and deeper understanding as we go. But one thing that we saw in the homework, we saw that if P squared equals P, then P is diagonalizable. In other words, all projection matrices are diagonalizable. That, that also, I think, is not an obvious fact. It is true, however. Um, and we will learn many, many more things about these things. Okay, but let's, uh, let's actually give an example. We haven't actually given an example for anything. The most important, or the first example we should start with is, of course, the smallest subspace, or the second smallest subspace, I guess, which is a line, right? So let's project onto the line uh, spanned by two one two two one in R three, right? So we're in R three. The line two two one is some line like this. So this vector is two, two, one. Again, New Year's resolution, try to write clearer. <laughs> um, and we, we take some other vector and I wanna find the projection onto this line. Again, the picture should be that it will be perpendicular and I'm looking for this green vector here. Okay, so let's pick a vector B. Let's let B be the vector three, four, four because that's the vector in the notes. <laughs> Right, so here V is the span of two, two, one. And so we already have a basis because it's a one dimensional thing. Any vector, any non-zero vector in the vector space will be a basis. Now we have a procedure to, that will actually tell us how to project onto this. We just need to find A and A transpose and, and do some of this voodoo. So what is A? A is a vector whose column space is equal to V. So A is just this three by one matrix. A transpose is this one by three matrix. And A transpose A is this matrix, whoops, got carried away with my twos, times this matrix, which is nine, which is an invertible one by one matrix. Right? So A transpose A was supposed to be invertible, and indeed it is. Now we just need to compute A, A transpose A inverse times A transpose, right? Uh, so A, A transpose A inverse times A transpose is equal to two, two, one. The inverse of nine is one ninth times two, two, one, right? So it will be one ninth times the product of two, two, one and two, two, one. Note that this is 
not not the same as taking a dot pro product. Here we'll get a three by three matrix. So you get four. Uh, I can do this. Four two, four four two, two two one. This is our projection matrix. Okay. So how do I project? I just need to multiply by this matrix. So uh, I guess I should do this on a separate slide. 4, 4, 2, 4, 4, 2, 2, 2, 1. So the projection of B onto V is 4, 4, 2, 4, 4, 2, 2, 2, 1, times what was the matrix that I got before? 3, 4, 4. And this thing, um, Oh, I forgot my one ninth, of course, right? There's a one ninth out in front. That's why I'm getting such huge numbers. Uh, 12 plus 16 plus 8. 12 plus 16 plus 8. 28. That's 36. So you get 4. And actually, now I know what the rest of them have to be because uh, the, the last row is just half of the, the first two rows, right? So, of course, this thing is in V, which was spanned by 2, 2, 1. Okay, but in this case, since the vector space we want to project onto is just the span of a single vector, we can actually say something, we can state this a little bit um, more clearly because the the matrices we're dealing with here were really just vectors, right? Because there's only one column in A. And this A, so this is, this A was actually just a vector U, which was a basis of V. This was just the vector, the row vector U transpose. And this thing was U transpose U. And it was a scalar. So you could actually treat that as a number, right? That's a dot product of U with itself. So if V is just the span of a, of a single vector, in other words, if you're projecting onto a line, then the formula for the projection is actually something easier It's this, because u transpose u is just, just a number, so inverting it just means you have to divide by it. And then it's just u times u transpose b. That's what we were getting here, right? This was u, this was 1 over u transpose u, and this was u transpose, and we will multiply that whole thing by b. Okay, and because lines are the smallest non-trivial vector spaces, it's nice to have like a nice formula for lines, so we should just record this as a formula. Okay, so uh, in particular, just call this a proposition. That That's the proposition in the notes. In particular, if u has length 1, then u transpose u is just 1. So the projection matrix is just u times u transpose. And note, we could have taken a basis for for this vector space that had length 1. That's easy enough. You can sort of always make sure that your basis has the correct length by dividing through by the length. And so in the case that you have a really nice basis, the projection matrix has a very nice expression. You just take u times u transpose. OK, now. One thing that I've sort of been saying this whole time, a, a little bit vaguely, but I've never actually shown or proved, is that this vector BV that we've been after this whole time is the closest vector in B to V. Technically, we've never proved that, right? But the way that we've defined it is that it's the vector in V, the unique vector in V, that is whose difference to B is perpendicular to V. It's the unique vector in V whose difference to B is perpendicular to, to V. That should be the closest thing, but we never actually made any notion of the, the length of um, E in any of this, but it's true. So, and it's really the way that you would think about it in practice. You would think about it as the closest point in the subspace to the vector V. So we should prove it. Say so for any, so let, let B be a subspace of Rn.
And for any, whoops, for any B in Rn, the projection of V onto B, sorry, of B onto V is the closest point in Euclidean distance, in, in the usual distance metric we, we talk about, to be in V. So here's the proof. Okay, so if, first of all, if B happens to live in V to start with, then you can't get any closer to B than itself, right? So then you can just check that the projection of uh, B onto V is just B. So B is the closest point to itself. Oh, and B is the closest point to itself in V. So if you're in V, then certainly the statement that I said in the proposition that projection is the closest point is true. Okay, so now, now let's suppose that B is not in V. And that V is the span of some k vectors, like this. Right, then V is the in the column V is equal to the column space of A, where A is the matrix. Uh, okay, so then let let A be the matrix whose columns are these AIs, so that V is the column space of A. All right, and any point in the in V looks like A times X for some X in Rn. So what are we looking for? We want to f find the point in V that's as close as possible to B, right? So we want the point in V, I mean, let me draw it as a cloud for now, such that when you subtract off B, this distance is minimized, uh, is minimized. So we want to minimize this thing, but every point in V looks like A times X. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the x that minimizes ax minus b. Okay, but minimizing this is the same thing as minimizing the square. It's a This is a standard technique, because sometimes the square of a Euclidean distance is easier to work with. Okay, now, recall that the projection of... Uh, or recall that b is equal to the projection of uh, B onto V plus E, where E was in V perp. Well, we can substitute this thing in for B. So we want to minimize This thing ax minus uh, projection of v onto b plus or minus e. I want to find the x that minimizes this. Okay, but notice that um, this thing is in v, and this thing is in v perp. That means that we can use the Pythagorean theorem on this. Uh, sorry, square. It, you, if, you, if you want to use a Pythagorean theorem, you need to make sure to square it. So this thing is equal to ax minus the projection squared plus the length of e squared. Okay, now... Uh, if I want to minimize this, and I only have control over x, how can I make this as small as possible? Again, I only have control over x, so e is fixed, and projection of b onto v is fixed. I can make this as small as possible by making this difference as small as possible. 
But the point is that the, we showed that the projection of B onto V is actually in V, which means that it, it's actually equal to some AX, which means that we can make this, we can make this zero. And if we make that zero, that, that's going to make this whole thing as small as possible because we have no control over E. So to minimize, uh, this thing, we can instead minimize this slightly different thing. And this thing, and this is equal to zero when x is equal to x hat, the thing that gave us the projection. So I want to find the ax that was that made this thing as small as possible. The ax that makes this thing as small as possible is exactly ax hat. So a x hat is the closest point to v, to b and v, i.e. this is equal to the projection. Right. The point is that I can make this thing zero, so I might as well make it zero, and that will be the closest point. Okay. Now I see that I'm basically out of time. So I said that we might see some actual application of projection today, and uh, I, I don't think I have enough time for that this lecture. But next time we will talk about how to think of linear regression as a projection. Again, this first slide was just supposed to be sort of a vague explanation about why you might want to find the closest point to a vector in a subspace. We'll see exactly how to think about linear regression as a kind of projection problem. And then also, um, I'll try to, if, if we have time, I'll talk about some example uh, called mathematical pretty faces. Uh, all right, see you next time.